You'd like to start? This meeting is being recorded. Thank you so much, Vicki, our moderator. I appreciate that. Uh, good morning. Welcome to the Board of Vocational Nursing and Psychiatric Technicians February board meeting. My name is Dr. Carol Mountain, and I am the board president. I would like to call this meeting to order at 9 a.m. First, some housekeeping information on how this meeting will be conducted. This meeting is being held via WebEx on Friday, February 19, 2021. I ask the board members and staff to mute their microphones to eliminate background noise, and when they are ready to speak, they can unmute. WebEx has a feature to virtually raise your hand, and I ask board members to use this function after each agenda item if they would like to comment or have questions. If we need a motion, I will call for a motion and any board member can raise their hand, identify themselves, and make a motion. If you are seconding a motion, please raise your hand, unmute, identify yourself, and second the motion. I will take a roll call vote for each motion. Again, please identify yourself by name each time you speak so our audience knows who is speaking. We will take public comment on each agenda item. If you wish to provide public comment, click on the Q&A button near the bottom center of your WebEx session. This brings up the Q&A chat box. To request time to speak, make sure the ask menu is set to all panelists and type, I would like to make a public comment. Attendee lines will be muted in the order the requests, unmuted in the order the requests are received and you will be allowed to present public comment. Please note your line will be muted at the end of the allotted public comment duration, which is three minutes. You'll be notified when you have 10 seconds remaining. Your name is not necessary, but please indicate how would you like how you would like us to identify you. For the sake of efficiency, the executive officer will respond directly to the public comment or defer to the appropriate staff person or council. For questions directed to the board members, I will either answer the question or direct it to the board members. I would now like to do an alphabetical roll call to establish quorum. I will ask each board member to respond here after I say their names. Alita Carpenter. Here. Thank you. John Dirking. Good morning. John Dirking here. Abraham Hill. Here. Ken Maxey. Mr. Maxey is not here. Uh, Donna Norton. Here. Thank you. Tara Rooks. Good morning. This is Tara Rooks. Good morning. Melissa Rubel Cava. Good morning here. Thank you. Cheryl Turner. Here. Thank you. Based on the roll call, we have established quorum. I'd like to move to item number two, introduction of board staff. Uh, Ms. Yamaguchi, would you please introduce yourself and your staff? Ms. Yamaguchi? This is the moderator. Give me one minute. I've got to go check the microphone. One second. Okay. Thank you. This is the moderator. Elaine is going to log on. She's going to log off and log back on.
Oh, I'm sorry. I just, I said, we'll give her a minute. Is that what she'd like us to do? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Can call in user area code 202. I've unmuted your microphone. Mr. Maxi, is this you? It is. Okay, great. Thank you. I have yeah, full control of your microphone. Uh, thank you very much. Uh-huh. Not sure I'm here. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Maxi. We're waiting on uh, Ms. Yamaguchi. They had a little technical issue. She's signing back on and she'll be introducing the board staff. Elaine, I've promoted you to a panelist. Can you please give me a microphone check? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Thank Elaine Yamaguchi. You. Is it working? Yes, it is. I swear one of these days I'll get good at this. So good morning, Madam Chair, board members, and uh, honored guests. Uh, Elaine Yamaguchi, Executive Officer, with us today um, are NEC's Cindy Fairchild, Faith Silverman, Jessica Gomez, Ann Schumann, Sue Ellen Clayworth, Beth DeYoung, Charlene De La Rosa, Judith McLeod, and of course our supervising NEC, Marie Cordero, our other staff present, our AEO, Vicki Lyman, Antoinette Wood, Tim Matsumoto, Doris Pierce, Maggie Archibald, Jay Prouty, and Gerilyn Marcino, and of course our double duty host and budget analyst, Vicki Saavedra. Madam Chair, I think that's everybody. Thank you so much. Legal counsel, will you please introduce yourselves? Thank you, Madam Chair. Kenneth Swanson, Attorney 3, General Counsel to the Board. Thank Hello, you, Mr. Swanson. This is Sheila Tatayan, Attorney 3. I'm the Regulatory Counsel for the Board. Thank you. Um, and we will now move to item 3, which is the Board Officer Elections and Meeting Minutes which I will turn over the board officer elections to Mr. Swenson, board legal counsel. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Good morning, members of the board. This is the time and place for the annual election of officers by the members of the board. The officers to be elected this morning are president and vice president of the board. With the consent of the board, the elections of officers will proceed as follows. The election of the president shall precede the election of the vice president. Nominations will be taken from the floor by members of the board. Nominations need not be seconded, but a member may <clears throat> excuse me, second a nomination to indicate endorsement. A nomination will be deemed in assumed motion that the nominee be elected to the office, so a separate motion and second shall not be required prior to casting ballots for the office. Uh, after being nominated, uh, I will ask nominees whether they accept the nomination prior to finalizing the ballot. With that said, we'll proceed. Uh, nominations are now in order for the Office of President of the board, do we have any nominations? Yes, uh, good morning, John Deerking here. I would nominate uh, Dr. Carol Mountain for board uh, president. Thank you, Mr. Deerking. Dr. Mountain is nominated. Do you accept the nomination, Dr. Mountain? Thank you, Mr. Deerking. Yes, I do accept that nomination. Thank you. Are there any further nominations for the office of president? Any further nominations? Hearing none, nominations are closed. We'll proceed to a roll call vote. I ask that each member cast their vote by stating the name of 
their candidate, their uh, single candidate on the ballot, and that is Dr. Mountain. Uh, Ms. Carpenter? Yes, um, Dr. Carol Mountain has my vote. Thank you. Mr. Deer King? Dr. Carol Mountain, board president. Thank you. Mr. Hill? Dr. Carol Mountain. Uh, Mr. Maxey? Uh, Dr. Carol Mountain. Thank you. Ms. Norton? Ms. Norton. Oh, sorry. I have to, mute. I have to unmute twice. Uh, Dr. Colonel Mount, please. Thank you. Ms. Rooks. Dr. Carol Mountain. Thank you. Ms. Ruble Carver. Dr. Carol Mountain. Thank you. Ms. Turner. Dr. Carol Mountain. Dr. Mountain, do you wish to cast the vote? I'll abstain. Thank you. Thank you. So the vote to unanimous for Dr. Mountain. Congratulations, Dr. Mountain. You're you're elected as board president. Proceeding to the office of vice president of the board, nominating ballot and order for the office of vice president of the board. Do we have a nomination? Alicia Carpenter nominates John Deerking. Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. Mr. Deerking, do you accept the nomination? Mr. Durking? Yes, do you hear me? Yes, thank you, Mr. Durking. Mr. Durking accepts the nomination. I, I, would accept, I would accept, thank you, Ms. Carpenter, for the nomination. Are, are there any further nominations for the Office of Vice President? Any further nominations? Hearing none, nominations are closed. We'll proceed to a roll call vote. Please indicate your selection uh, by indicating the uh, name of the candidate. There's a single candidate, Mr. Durking. Ms. Carpenter. Yes, my vote is for John Durking. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hill. John Durking. Mr. Maxey. John Durking. Ms. Norton. John Deer King. Thank you. Ms. Rooks. Mr. John Deer King. Thank you. Ms. Rupalkova. John Deer King. Thank you. Ms. Turner. John Deer King. Uh, Dr. Mountain. John Deer King. Thank you. Mr. Deer King, do you wish to cast a vote? I, I will abstain. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, the vote uh, is unanimous. Uh, Doctor, or excuse me, Mr. Durking is reelected to the office of vice president. Thank you. That concludes the elections for this year. Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Swenson. Uh, I'd like to move on to <clears throat> to B, which is the meeting minutes for January 26, 2021. Uh, please raise your hand to make a motion to approve the January 26, 2021 meeting minutes. This is Alita Carpenter. My hand is raised. Thank you. Is everyone all right with raising their hands using that feature? This is Donna Norton. That feature only works if someone's monitoring the hands. Otherwise, we end up with um, an awkward silence where someone is wanting to do something, but their name is, they're not being acknowledged with having their hand raised. I actually am monitoring, but I only see um, Ms. Carpenter's hand raised. Vicki, moderator, do you see the hands that are raised? I do, and the only person I see at this time is Ms. Carpenter. Um, so the reason that I said that was Ms. Carpenter came on and said that her hand was raised. And so I, I'm fine with, with using the hand raising feature as long as 
it's being monitored. And so that's the only reason I said that was because she's came on and said her hand was raised. <laughs> Hello, this is board member Rooks. I too raised my hand in the function and I noticed that my name didn't get called. Okay. Well, are there, are there any concerns or comments that need to be made for the January 26, 2021 meeting minutes? Is there a motion to approve? This is Donna Norton. Um, I'll make the motion to approve the minutes. Um, however, I do have a comment about it, and that is that the attendance needs to be corrected because I was not at that meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Um, is there a second? Ms. Carpenter, are you seconding by raising your hand? Yes, I am. Thank you so much. Is there any public comment? This is the moderator. I do not see any public comment at this time. Please raise your hand if there is any further question or comments from the board members. Is there any discussion from legal counsel or staff? Seeing none, it has been moved and seconded to approve the January 26, 2021 meeting minutes. I will do a roll call and establish who's in favor, opposed, or abstains. Ms. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Durking? Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. Mr. Maxey? Yeah. Ms. Norton? I will abstain. Thank you. Ms. Rooks? Ms. Rooks? Tara? Yes. Thank you. Yes, can you hear me? Oh, yes, you're thank welcome. you. Uh, Ms. Rubulkava? I will abstain. And Ms. Turner? Yes. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Mountain, I vote yes. That motion is approved. Uh, item four is fiscal budgets. Uh, update from the DCA budget staff. So we have staff from the DCA budget office to provide an update on our fiscal condition and answer any questions that board members may have. Good morning, my name is Karen Munoz and I am one of the budget managers in the department's budget office. Um, today, I am going to go ahead and go over the department or the board's fund condition statement as it is shown on the governor's budget. Um, do you have the slide up, Vicki, to share? This is the PowerPoint. The board members, everybody has been given that document, so they should all have it. Okay, great. Um, I just wanted to kind of touch base on what has been changed since the last time that we have met. Um, in the governor's budget, there are a few adjustments that were made to the board's appropriation. Um, uh, they are the annual budget um, changes. So employee comp and retirement have changed um, based on rate changes that have that happen annually. Um, those rates fluctuate. So we go ahead and reassess those numbers. Additionally, there is a big factor to the change of the 9.23 reduction in employee salaries that is also included in the appropriation, which gives a net um, adjustment to the budget from the last time you guys saw their fund condition of $817,000. So that is a, um, the main change to this fund condition statement. And so um, there is also going to be what you don't see on this fund condition is a 5% reduction to the board's operating expense. And this is scheduled to be effective July 1st of this year. But this adjustment is not reflected on the fund condition because it's anticipated to be included in the spring adjustments. So we'll see this later on this fiscal year. Um, and we do notice that there is um, a, a downward trend in reserve with the deficit projected in 23-24. However, the budget office and board staff is aware of this and we're working towards a future increase. 
in fees to mitigate this issue. Um, the budget office will continue to monitor the board's funds closely and work with the staff to assist whenever we are needed. Um, but the, this is the only change that we are seeing in the funds at this time. Um, I'll go ahead and open it up to if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Thank you very much. I, I see no questions. So okay, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll move on to item 5A, which is the Education Division Report. Ms. Cordero, would you please provide this report? Hi, good morning. This is Marie Cordero. Um, board members, you have my report dated February 19th. And if you have any questions regarding the report, I'll be happy to answer them right now. Well, it looks like there's none, um, but if I could just take a minute, what I would like to do is um, I would like to just introduce our newest nursing education consultant, and that is Charlene De La Rosa. She it will be working remotely, and um, she is almost done with her training, and she will be, in March, she will be um, receiving her um, program assignments, and she will be working with uh, her programs. And I'm wondering, Charlene, if you could just maybe say who you are, where you came from, because she has a very, very good background. So if I might just give Charlene 30 seconds to introduce herself. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, my name is Charlene. Um, I work for um, American Career College for almost 10 years. Um, I used to work at the Ontario campus and then I worked at the corporate office and handled four programs for American Career College. Um, and then after that, I also work for the California Department of Public Health um, and do surveys and evaluations for skilled nursing facilities. Thank you. Welcome, Ms. Della Rosa. That's awesome. Um, and thank you for your report, Ms. Cordera. We will move on to the Education Committee report. And the Education Committee met on January 11, 2021. Um, we reviewed the following items. There was a COVID update, just discussing some of the issues that are happening with COVID. It's kind of an ever-changing uh, situation. There was a review of the sunset legislation regarding scope of practice and an update on strategic planning. I did want to mention too that we uh, reviewed and discussed the special program held on February 17, 2021. And I cannot thank the NECs and Marie and Cindy Fairchild for such an excellent presentation. And I do hope that the board members all really enjoyed it. Are, are there any comments or questions about the Education Committee report? Okay, seeing none, we will move on to item 5C1, uh, reconsideration of provisional approval, Hacienda La Puente Adult School Vocational Nursing Program, Dr. Fairchild. Good morning, everybody. I just lost my notes. Um, Hacienda La Puente Adult Education Program is requesting to be removed from provisional approval and returned to full approval. The program had an unannounced site visit on October 23rd through the 25th in 2018. There were 21 violations identified on that visit. Therefore, the program was placed on provisional approval in February of 2019. The program implemented several in 
interventions to meet regulatory requirements and prevent the violations from reoccurring. All violations were corrected May 2019. There have been no violations over the past two years. The recommendation is to grant full approval for a period of four years beginning February 19th, 2021. Thank you. Is there a representative from the program? There is. I am going to unmute her mic now. Suzanne, your microphone is unmuted. You may speak. Thank you. Good morning, board members. Um, good morning, Dr. Fairchild. I'm Suzanne Seymour. I'm the director of the vocational nursing and psychiatric programs for Hacienda La Puente. And I appreciate the opportunity to move the program forward um, back to full status. I would like to ask for a motion and a second from the board. Is there a motion? Alita Carpenter. Donna Norton, I move that we accept. Alita Carpenter. I Was that Ms. Norton who moved to accept? Certainly. Thank you. Is there a second? Alita Carpenter, I did second. Thank you. I apologize. I didn't hear. Um, Is there any discussion from legal counsel or staff? I have a discussion item. Um, it appear, This is Cheryl Turner. It appears that the hand raising function is not being monitored. <laughs> And people are, you know, speaking, making speaking motions. So I need to note that. Alita Carpenter, I apologize for speaking. My hand was raised. <laughs> My apologies. I will make sure that I see if any hands go up. Thank you for that, Ms. Ms. Turner. I appreciate it. Um, is there any discussion from legal counsel? No, Madam Chair, merely to reiterate the motion is uh, to accept the report and approve the recommendations of the NEC. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. So I will do a roll call to establish who's in favor and who's opposed. Ms. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Durking? Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. Mr. Maxey? Yes. Ms. Norton? Yes. Ms. Rooks? Yes. Ms. Rubel-Kava? Yes. Ms. Turner? Yes. And Dr. Mountain, I vote yes. So this has been, this has been unanimously approved. We will move on to item 5D, request to admit students by programs on provisional approval. Angeles Institute Artesia Vocational Nursing Program, Dr. Fairchild. Hi. Angeles Institute is requesting to admit a full-time class of 30 students to begin April 4th, 2021 to replace the class that just graduated February 12th, 2021. The program continues to be compliant with NCLEX pass rates with an annual pass rate of 87%. And the recommendation is to approve the program's request to admit a full-time class beginning May 21st. And then also to place them on the May, 21st, the May 21st, 2021 board meeting agenda for reconsideration. And the beginning date for the class would be April 4th. Thank you, Dr. Fairchild. Is there a representative from the program? There is. I have, I will unmute her microphone now. Brandy, go ahead. Good morning. It's Brandy Tower, Director of Nursing, Angela City.
Would you like to make any further comments? No, I agree with um, the recommendations. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I see Ms. Turner has her hand raised. Would you like to speak, Ms. Turner? Oh, that was, I'm waiting for the motion call. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions or comments from the board? Any comments from the public? I do not see any at this time. Thank you so much. I'd like to ask for a motion and a second from the board. And I see that Ms. Turner has raised her hand. Yes, this is Cheryl Turner. I move that we accept and adopt the recommendations of the NEC regarding the Angeles Institute. Thank you so much. Is there a second? I see Ms. Carpenter has seconded. Uh, I will do a roll call. It's been moved and seconded to accept the recommendations of the NEC for Angeles Institute of Teaching. I will do a roll call establish who's in favor and who's opposed or abstain. Madam Chair, I'm getting a lot of uh, noise and, and dog barking, but I don't know if I heard uh, the opportunity for public comment. Uh, yes, there was an opportunity for public comment, but we can certainly open it up again. Is there any yes. further public comment? There is none. Thank you very much, moderator. Um, I will do a roll call and establish who's in favor, opposed, or abstains. Ms. Carpenter? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Durking? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Hill? Yes. Mr. Maxey? Yeah. Ms. Norton? Yes. Ms. Rooks? Yes. Ms. Rubukava? Yes. Ms. Turner? Yes. I'm Carol Mountain. I vote yes. That is, the motion is approved unanimously. We will move on to Karam College Vocational Nursing Program. Ms. Gomez? Uh, yes, Kiram College has requested to admit a class of 16 students to start on March 1st of 2021. Um, they were placed on provisional on November the 23rd, uh, 2019, due to uh, noncompliance with regulations and their low pass rates. Uh, their pass rates remain extremely low. Uh, currently, their pass rate is 33 percentage points below the state, sitting at 44 percent. It's very concerning that this quarter they had eight students test and only one student pass. Um, the reason that I am uh, going along with the request to admit or recommending the request to admit is they have done a complete curriculum revision to assist with their uh, improvement plan. And the only way that they can initiate their improvement plan is to uh, have a class to start their new curriculum. Um, my recommendation is to give them the class of 16 students, but since their pass rates, while they've been on provisional, has consistently decreased to not entertain another request for an admission ad, to admit a class of students until after this class uh, graduates and have and we have their first set of pass rates. They do have all of the uh, faculty and uh, clinical sites to meet to offer this class. Thank you so much, Ms. Gomez. Uh, is there a representative from the program? There is, and I will unmute his microphone now. Dr. Wayne Williams, your microphone is unmuted. Good morning, uh, board members, and um, good morning, Jessica. Uh, we are representing Durham College of Nursing. As you all know, we went on provisional in November of 2019. We had great plans for 2020, as many of us had. 
However, a lot of uns unseen circumstances have showed up on our doorstep. And uh, 2020, I'm sure for most, most schools as well as ours, was not a very good year. Um, we took the opportunity to look at <clears throat> other things. We tried a couple different measures, uh, bringing in some more ATI programming and what have you with classes during 2020. Still didn't seem to help, uh, help us. So what we did is we went back and looked at a total curriculum revision. And we looked at, you know, things that are, that are uh, hampering our students type thing. Students coming in with prerequisites from other schools type thing. We're not really sure what they learned. It was evident that in some cases they didn't learn very much. So we went back and did an integrated curriculum where we're looking at, we put the pharmacology back in, we put the AMP back in, we put the nutrition back in and said, look, you know, we're just going to teach everything in the program. That way we feel that we have a better um, handle on what the students are learning, the presentation in the classroom type thing. We went back to the instructors, we reviewed, you know, how we're going to present this new curriculum. and. Um, we feel confident, we feel confident with it. And, um, you know, only time is gonna tell here. Uh, we're, we have integrated more ATI into the new curriculum. Um, and um, we'll just have to see what happens here. But, you know, we, we're looking for that opportunity to try this new curriculum. Even the uh, last two classes that have graduated on the old curriculum, we still have 24 students that haven't tested yet. And we're having a hard time getting some of those students tested. This week, we were booking students to go as far away as Los Angeles and San Diego in order to write the NCLEX exam because of the unavailability of um, you know, test times here in the Sacramento Valley. So we have 24 uh, candidates that are still out there ready to write. And we feel confident that we're going to do better with those um, because those were the ones in, in the last two cohorts that we had the opportunity to institute the changes that we wanted to institute. So we're looking forward to a better, uh, even with those two quarters writing, uh, well, uh, if they write it within the next two quarters, but those 24 students, we're looking for better passwords. So, um, you know, we hope that you give us the opportunity to continue uh, to try this new curriculum, um, you know, where hopefully it'll work and hopefully, uh, um, you know, we'll continue. We have some good clinical sites right now that have now come back online. And uh, hopefully it'll continue that way and we can get rid of this monster, this COVID-19 thing and uh, move on with life. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Williams. And I certainly uh, understand your pain around not, students not being able to get testing because Pearson has had to change their whole mode of doing things. So I hope your 24 students will get to test soon. I know that's uh, stressful for the students. Are there any other questions or comments from the board? Uh, Ms. Rubalcava. Hi, good morning. Um, I do have kind of a follow-up question, and I don't know if this is the right place to ask or not, but Curum College is actually the only, um, to my knowledge, is the only uh, program that allows psych techs to use Method 3 on their application to apply to become an LVN. Uh, my question is, are those pass rates looked at and reflected on in a different way, or is that included in the quarterly? Uh, can I answer this? Uh, Kiram College is not the only college that uses Method 3, and uh, they do not have any psych techs. They only have VNs, um, but the pass rate of the Method 3 is not reflected on the reports. Thank you, Ms. Gomez. Thank you uh, for clearing that up for me. Thank you. Are there any are there any comments from the public? I do not see any. Thank you, moderator. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I would like to ask for a motion and a second from the board. Uh, Ms. Rubalcava, is that a motion? I, I see your hand was raised now. Your hand's down. Mr. Durking, your hand is raised. <clears throat> is that a, a motion, Mr. Durking? 
Yes, I would so move. Thank you. And Ms. Carpenter, I see your hand is up. Is that a second? Ms. Carpenter, I see your hand is up. Is that a second? I'm sorry, my um, my unmute wasn't working. Yes, it is a second. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been moved and seconded to accept the NEC recommendation for Curum College. I will do a roll call vote, um, starting with Ms. Carpenter. Madam Chair, um, you do need to ask for public comment. Oh, my apologies. Uh, are, is there further public comment? I do not see any at this time. Thank you. Uh, I Back to the roll call vote, Ms. Carpenter. Uh, yes. Thank you. Mr. Durking. Yes. Mr. Hill. Yes. Mr. Maxey. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Norton. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Rooks. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Ms. Rubelkava. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Turner. Yes. And Carol Mountain votes yes. So this motion, motion is approved unanimously. We will move on to number three, Institute of Technology Clovis Vocational Nursing Program, Dr. Fairchild. Thank you. Institute of Technology Clovis requests to, requests to be removed from provisional approval and return to full approval, as well as admit a full-time class of 30 students beginning March 15th, 2021 to graduate April 15th, 2022. And this will be a replacement class for the class graduating April 16th, 2021. The program was placed on provisional approval March 24th, 2018 due to NCLEX pass rates being not within uh, regulation. The program has implemented many interventions to improve pass rates, which I listed in the board report. The program continues to increase pass rates with their annual average 80, at 89%, which is 12 percentage points above the state average. The recommendation is to grant the full approval for a period of four years beginning February 19th, 2021, and approve the program's request to admit a full-time class of 30 students beginning March 15th. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fairchild. You're is welcome. there a representative from the program? Yes, Paula Richards, I have unmuted your microphone. Thank you. I'm Paula Richards, I'm Director of Nursing at Institute of Technology Clovis. I want to thank the board and uh, especially our NEC for helping us uh, improve our pass rates. Um, we're delighted with them. It's been a long road and uh, I totally agree with um, Dr. Fairchild's uh, report. Thank you. Are there any question or comments from the board? I see no hands raised. Are there any comments from the public? There are none at this time. Thank you. I would like to ask for a motion and a second from the board. Uh, Ms. Turner, is that a motion? Yes, it is. I move to approve and adopt the recommendation of the NEC regarding the Institute of Technology Clovis. Thank you so much. Ms. Norton, is that a second? Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to accept the recommendation of the NEC regarding the Institute of Technology Clovis. 
I would like to do a roll call and establish who's in favor, opposed, or abstains. Ms. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Durkin? Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. Mr. Maxey? Yes. Ms. Norton? Yes. Ms. Rooks? Yes. Ms. Rubel-Cava? Yes. Ms. Turner? Yes. And this is Carol Mountain, I am a yes. It has been, that motion is approved unanimously. We will move on to the Institute of Technology Modesto. Dr. Uh, Fairchild? Thank you. Institute of Technology Modesto is requesting to admit a full-time class of 30 students beginning March 15th, 2021 to, and graduating April 29th, 2022. They will be replacing the class that just graduated on February 12th. The program continues to improve their INCLEX pass rates. Their current um, annual pass rate is 93%. Um, the recommendation is to approve the program's request to admit a full-time class of 30 students and to place the program on the May 21st board agenda for reconsideration approval of provisional approval. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any, is there a representative from the program? Yes, there is. Director Catherine Calvin, I've unmuted your microphone. Hi, good morning, board members and Dr. Fairchild. I want to thank you for this opportunity and um, appreciate um, you giving this class possibly. Thank you. Is that for your comments? Uh, are there any questions or comments from the board? Ms. Turner, I see your hand raised. My mistake. Um, Thank you. Okay. Uh, any comments from the public? There are none. Thank you. I would like to ask for a motion and a second from the board. Let's see. Uh, Ms. Norton, I see your hand raised and I see Ms. Carpenter's hand raised. Can we take Ms. Norton's as a motion? I move that we accept the NEC's recommendation. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Carpenter. Yes, I second the motion. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to accept the recommendations of the NEC for the Institute of Technology Modesto. I will do a roll call and establish who's in favor, opposed, or abstains. Ms. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Durking? Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. Mr. Maxey? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Norton? Yes. Ms. Rooks? Yes. Ms. Rubel-Cava? Yes. Ms. Turner? Yes. And Carol Mountain is a yes. So that was approved unanimously. We will move on to Southeast California College. Uh, Ms. Silverman? Good morning. I'm presenting Southeast California College. Uh, with a request for a full-time class day, a day class of 20 students with two alternates. Originally, this class was placed on provisional approval for two years due to non-compliance with NCLEX uh, regulatory pass rates. The first class graduated five students, and of the five students, no, none of the students passed NCLEX. Um, they had made some revisions, and we were waiting to see what the second class was going to yield. Um, unfortunately, the students that went and took from the second class did not test until after January. They tested actually on January 2nd. 
So if you look at the NCLEX pass rates, they do not reflect the passing of these students. Of the six students that finished the second class, one was a considered a non-graduate, five graduated. Of the five, four have already taken NCLEX and took it on January 2nd. The director has provided me documentation, which has been verified through the supervisory NEC and licensing that these are valid licenses. And so therefore, I do recommend them to be able to start their third class of 20 students. It will give them 20 students. If you do not uh, choose to approve the class of 20 and they wait till the next board meeting, they will be waiting until May with no students. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there a representative from the program? There is. Director Edna Domingo, your microphone is unmuted. Okay. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to appreciate the uh, commitment of Ms. Silverman working with us with our program. And uh, the students that graduated in October 16 was ready to test in December but they could not get a test date. So that the earliest date they were able to get was on January 2. Four of them went and they all passed the NCLEX. Um, thank you so much for um, considering us to continue on with the, our program. I'm working with Ms. Silverman on um, revising our curriculum and we are in that process in order to be able to uh, strengthen our program and increase our pass rate. Thus far, the four students that went all passed, so we had 100% on that one. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Uh, Ms. Carpenter, I see you have your hand raised. I apologize. I never took it down from last. Um, no worries. Um, are there any public comments? I do not see any. Uh, I'd like to ask for a motion and a second from the board. I'm looking for raised hands. Uh, Ms. Rooks. Is that a motion? Yes. yes, it's a motion. I move that we accept the NEC's recommendation. Thank you so much. Mr. Hill, is that a second? That is a second. Thank you so much. It's been uh, moved and seconded to accept the recommendations from the NEC. I'd like to do a roll call vote. Ms. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Durking? Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. Mr. Maxey? Yeah. Ms. Norton? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Rooks? Yes. Ms. Rubalcava? Yes. Ms. Turner? Yes. And I am also a yes. Carol Mountain, it has been approved unanimously. University of Antelope Valley Vocational Nursing Program, Ms. Silverman. Hi, I'm presenting University of Antelope Valley Vocational Nursing Program with a request to admit a part-time evening weekend class of 30 students. Um, previously, they had been put on provision due to their low pass rates. Uh, what we found is there was a delay in the students um, from when they graduated to where they felt comfortable and they were testing. Um, ultimately, they went through and started testing, as you can see in the NCLEX licensure exam data table, that they were um, negative 22, negative 21, negative 29, and the last three quarters, they have the people that they have implemented actions to help their program, and they have gone from plus one to plus three to plus seven. So my recommendation is to grant them uh, a class of 30, and that will give them a max of 53 students because they have 23 in a full time class. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. <clears throat> is there a representative from the program? There is Director Albi Ancheta. I have unmuted your microphone. Hello. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Albi Ancheta. I'm the uh, Director of Nursing for the University of Lango Valley um, Vocational Nursing Program. Um, I would like to um, um, extend my gratitude to our nurse consultant that has been helping us through this process. We really looked deeply into our deficiencies and um, began um, all the um, corrective actions. Um, we will only continue to improve. We have a commitment to um, continue to service our community and produce quality nurses that will become um, uh, valuable members of the community. So I thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Uh, Ms. Rooks, I see you have your hand raised. My apologies, I didn't take it down the last time. No worries. Um, are there any comments from the public? I see none at this time. Thank you. I would like to ask for a motion and a second from the board. You can use the raise hand function. I'm watching. Uh, Ms. Carpenter, thank you. It's, I take that as a, is that a, a motion? Yes, it is. Thank you. And Ms. Turner, is that a second? Yes, it is. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been moved and seconded to accept the recommendation from the NEC for the University of Antelope Valley. Um, I would like to do a roll call vote. Ms. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Durking? Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. Mr. Maxey? Yeah. Ms. Turner? I, sorry, Ms. Norton? Yes. Ms. Rooks? Yes. Ms. Rubalcava? Yes. Ms. Turner? Yes. And Carol Mountain, I say yes as well. It's, the motion has been approved unanimously. Uh, item 5E, consideration of provisional approval and request to admit students. The first one on the this, on 5E is Integrity College Vocational Nursing Program, and that will be Ms. Gomez. Uh, hello. Uh, Integrity College uh, is requesting to admit a class of 30 students, and their provisional approval did expire in November. However, due to the uh, non-compliant pass rates of the program and the program diligently working to complete a major curriculum revision at that time, it was overlooked that they were expiring. So no report was written in November to extend their provisional approval. The program uh, pass rates have been and remain below the state. However, the last quarter, they did increase their pass rates by six percentage points. And without having this class, the, the class that they're requesting, they will not have the opportunity to implement their new uh, curriculum that they have implemented. They have all of the resources required to start the class. However, since their uh, pass rates do remain so low, um, my recommendation is to deny the 30 students, but to uh, give them 20 students to start the program with. And that would be on March 2nd, 2021. Thank you, Ms. Gomez. Is there a representative from the program? Yes, there is. Director Alice Sorrell Thompson, I have unmuted your microphone. Yes, good morning. I hope I'm uh, able to be heard. Hello? Yes, we yes, can, we hear, can you. hear you. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Good morning, board. I'm Alice Sorrell Thompson, the program director for Integrity College of Health. 
Um, I do want to, of course, extend our gratitude uh, to Ms. Gomez for her guidance and support through this journey with us. Um, we have uh, definitely, we definitely agree and understand the assessment and support the assessment uh, of uh, our NEC. Uh, and Tennessee College of Health uh, has uh, worked very diligently to stabilize their past races as every school um, has been impacted by COVID. So have we as it relates to our graduates being able to test in a, in a timely fashion. Um, and so we work very carefully with them on a regular basis to make sure that they continue to be um, that they continue to, you know, be in contact with the information so that when they are able to test that they are ready to go with that. Uh, <clears throat> Integrity College of Health has been acquired by Legacy Education. And uh, with that change, um, we would like to ask for our start date for um, this proposed cohort to happen in May, May the 4th. Uh, that would give us a little bit more time to really align our processes with legacy uh, education, uh, to recruit students. Uh, we do have a waiting list already, but we do have um, some students that are inquiring. We'd like to be able to give them that opportunity to be vetted and to start the program May the 4th, uh, 2021. Thank you so much. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Seeing no hands raised, are there any comments from the public? I do not see any at this time. Thank you so much. I'd like to ask for a motion and a second from the board and you, I am watching for the raised hands. Ms. Carpenter. Yes, move to accept the NSC's report. Thank you so much. Is there a second? Ah, Ms. Rooks. Yes, that's a second. Thank you so much. It's been moved and seconded to accept the NEC's re recommendations for the reconsideration uh, for Integrity College. Uh, I'd like to do a roll call vote. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Swenson. I just wanted to point out that the pending motion would also retroactively continue the ongoing provisional approval to cure the inadvertent gap. So that's implicit in the recommendations of the NEC and therefore part of the motion. Thank you. Thank you so much for that clarification, Mr. Swenson. Uh, with that information, Ms. Carpenter, your vote? Um, yes. Thank you. Mr. Durking? Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. Mr. Oh, Maxie? They're voting. Yeah. Ms. Norton? Ms. Norton? Sorry, I couldn't get off mute. Yes. Ms. Rooks? Yes. Ms. Rubalcava? Yes. Ms. Turner? Yes. And Joe Mountain, I vote yes. Uh, the motion is approved unanimously. All right, we will move on to item six, the executive officer's report. Ms. Yamaguchi? Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Lane Yamaguchi, your executive officer. 
Um, you have received my written report, but I wanted to uh, highlight a few of the items. First, of course, the item on all of our minds right now is our, our upcoming sunset hearing. We still do not have a date and, and time set, um, but we have been told that in all likelihood, um, our hearing will be held virtually. Um, that's good news, of course. And we've been working with um, with staff and with DCA's uh, help to prepare. Um, yesterday, I spent a few hours with our, our staff and went through some some possible questions and scenarios. It's um it's going to be an interesting hearing, of course. We're looking forward to some lively discussion, but um. As it stands, I know that um, DCA hosted a very big uh, overview meeting earlier this week, and I know Dr. Mountain uh, did tune in for that. So they covered, I think, the very basics of what um, what the board chair and the board executive officer should expect. And um, <laughs> so Dr. Mountain, we're probably going to want to get together and chat sometime next week. Um, as far as uh, the other parts of the sunset hearing and the process, um, let me pause here for any questions. Elaine, do we have any idea what the date might be or even a like the month? <laughs> we don't actually. And, you know, I, would, I had been assuming something uh, along the lines of St. Patrick's Day because right after that, the, the legislature tends to go on spring recess. But recently, we have been hearing March, maybe April, because uh, the committees are hearing twice as many boards this year to make up for last year. So it is still very much up in the air. Um, I do know that um, the legislative staff has been working quite assiduously on our the background paper because they keep asking us for more information. Uh, so, no, I, I genuinely, the short answer, of course, is no. We really have no idea at this point. Thank you for that that answer. That's a great answer. Uh, if any of the other members have any questions on, on the sunset hearing. Um, I will actually mention though that um, once the committee has the draft of the background paper they will be sending it to us we get to give a very very fast read just a fact check um, and then it's submitted to the, um, the committee members then after the hearing itself we will have 30 days um, to respond to any of the questions in the paper and or raised in the hearing that report and those responses must be approved by the board there will be a very, very quick turnaround at that point. So we will be keeping everyone posted as to the time and, and probably some of the issues as well. So without any other questions, let me move on to committee appointments. Um, we did attach in, um, in this report uh, the existing committee structure with a description of our standing committees as well as a very rudimentary form for the board members. Um, as I mentioned, we have two vacancies right now on our, our standing committees. And as an odd coincidence, we have two new board members, but that's not, it shouldn't be seen as just an automatic um, move in and move out. Um, so what we wanted to do is that if the board members um, are interested in um, changing their assignments, they could do so um, and submit that form back to us within the next week. And um, then we will take the exist the uh, submitted forms and the executive committee will look at the overall uh, committee assignment matrix and make those assignments and we'll notify people as quickly as we possibly can. But um, as a side note, um, we do, of course, always have the interest and the ability for the executive committee to appoint um, an ad hoc committee or an advisory committee. Um, so if there is a topic that you are particularly interested in, um, you may very well, and I'd really actually appreciate if you would write that in, in um, that committee uh, assignment request form. Um, beyond that though, uh, as I mentioned in the, um, 
in the written report, um, and this this was something we discussed with the executive committee. I believe that um, the board would be best served if we went to a permanent model whereby committee assignments were for a minimum of two years rather than the one year. And um, I believe in council, you may want to check me on this. I believe that would take um, a motion and vote from the board at this time. Uh, can Mr. Swenson let us know if we need to make a vote? Yes, that could be accomplished by motion. So if the board was inclined to do that, uh, a motion and second with a roll call vote would be appropriate. So is it appropriate at this time to call for a vote? Madam Chair, this is Ken Maxey. I, I would like to make a motion to that effect. Okay. Madam Chair, this is Abraham. I'd like to second that motion. So it's been moved and seconded to extend committee appointments to two years. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, Mr. Swenson, do I need to ask for public comment? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'd like to call for, for public comment. I do not see any hands raised at this time. If, is there further discussion from the board? Yeah, I have a question. This is Cheryl Turner. That, does that also include chair appointments or not? Well, actually, um, I appreciate the question, Ms. Turner. Actually, I did not think through that, but, um, you know, it, of course, is the uh, committee's prerogative really to select a chair, and it is actually the executive committee's prerogative to to make that appointment. Um, if you wanted to um, offer a friendly amendment on the motion um, to that effect, I, I don't. I don't see that that would be a problem because actually, you know, the point of the, the suggested change here is to get a little bit more stability and, and continuity in the, in the committees to um, really, I think, enhance the uh, policy discussions that we have. Um, one Every one year is too quick a turnaround. And I think um, I think we would do better to, to allow the board members that time to, to mellow into the, the role. But, um, but as I say, if you would like to offer a friendly amendment. Well, I would, yes. If Mr. Maxey will accept that one. Uh, Madam, uh, Madam Chair, I, I accept uh, Ms. Turner's uh, friendly amendment. Okay. Well, actually, Ms. Turner, would you, would you mind clarifying that? Did you want to make sure that the chair appointment was also for two years or not? I, no, I, no, I would like the option for board members to have an opportunity to chair. So, so the the two year committee assignment does not include a two year appointment for the chair. That's true. Perfect. That's my motion. Thank you. So the amended motion is committee assignments will be for two years, except for the chair, which will continue to be on a yearly basis. Wonderful. Uh, let's Did Mr. Maxey concur in the, uh, that uh, a refinement? Yeah, but I, I, I accept that. And I, I believe it was Mr. Hill who seconded it. Do you concur on that as well? I concur. This is Abraham Hill. Thank you. Um, are there any further public comments? Great. Any raised hands out in the public at this time? Okay. All right, I will call for a vote. Uh, Ms. Carpenter. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Durking. Yes. Mr. Hill. Yes. Mr. Maxey? Yes. Ms. Norton? Yes. Ms. Rooks? Yes. Ms. Rubalcava? 
Yes. Ms. Turner? Yes. And I'm Carol Mountain, and I also vote yes. That is passed unanimously. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, before I move on, does anybody have any questions about any of the committees themselves? Okay. So the last item I want to um, bring up for the board, of course, is um, the strategic plan review. And I believe we've briefly discussed this with all the committees that met in January. Um, as the board remembers, we worked quite assiduously in 2019 to develop our strategic plan. Um, it was put into effect, of course, January 1st of 2020. But last year, of course, was a little bit odd. Um, so it is considered a very good form, of course, to review uh, the progress that a board makes on a strategic plan. Usually we've seen things like that um, midway through or two years in. Um, our board's uh, plan is for five years. But because 2020 was a little bit odd, um, I would strongly recommend that the board hold a in-depth review and evaluation um, to be held in May. Um, and at this point, we would ask the, um, the committees to work with their assigned staff to look at the goals and the timelines, as well as the committee's um, own goals and objectives and analyze where we are, where we should be, um, and look at any reasons why we are ahead or behind of schedule and make any relevant um, recommendations for, for changes, for amendments, for refocus of goals, and, and actually maybe even to sharpen some programmatic goals. Um, so my suggestion, of course, and this, of course, does not require a, a motion or, or, or vote, but I would like the board members to be ready to do some some work with the staff, and um, we would have this uh, review and discussion um, at our May be meeting. Um, would there be any questions on on that? I see no hands raised. Great, great. Um, that technically winds up my official report, but I would be happy to answer any other questions from board members at this time. Okay, thank you very much board members. Um, Ms. Yamaguchi, yes. uh, I understand that item seven uh, needs to out of seven and eight need to be after 11 a.m. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you very, very much, Madam Chair. Um, our speakers are both uh, in meetings until 11. So we would um, we would ask the chair to rearrange the agenda ever so slightly. Um, you we would still need the um, executive committee report. And, okay. and then we would move directly into um, the licensing evaluation report. Excellent. Thank you so much. I will quickly give the executive committee report um, you, that was included in your packet. I did want to highlight just a couple of things that we did here. We may hear again, um, just at the expert witness program, they received 20 applications, which is, that's really wonderful um, because I know that's always an issue, not only in this board, but also in the board of registered nursing. So that's excellent. And that the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, there will be an executive officer evaluation, and I will be reaching out to Carrie Holmes to connect uh, to Nicole Lee, and the planning of that will begin after this board meeting. Um, I think those were the big highlights that, that I wanted to mention. Uh, and we've already covered the uh, committee structure and voted to extend that for two years. So those were really the big highlights that I thought we needed to, to touch on. Are there any questions? Questions from the board? I, I see no hands raised. Uh, Mr. Swenson, do I need to take uh, comments on this from the public? Can we move on?
you can move on since there's no pending motion. Thank you so much. Uh, so we will move on to item 9A, the licensing division report and Ms. Brown will provide the report. Hi, this is Shelly. Um, the licensing division report was included in your packet. Um, does anyone have any questions? Okay. I see no raised hands at this time. Is there any public comment on the licensing division report? There are no hands raised in the public. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Brown, for your report. Thank you. We'll move on. Item 9B is the Licensing and Evaluations Committee report, and Ms. Carpenter will provide that report. Um, yes, the Licensing and Evaluations Committee which is basically me, um, met virtually with staff and legal counsel on ja January 19th. Um, we discussed the strategic plan and its applicability to this committee. Um, Ms. Brown provided an update, most of which is contained in the report that's in our package. Um, there were no actions taken at this meeting. Future agenda item will be continued updates on both staffing, staffing and performance measures. That's basically what happened at our meeting. Thank you. Uh, are there board members, do you have any questions? Seeing no hands, are there any public comments? There are no hands raised in the public. Thank you. We will move on to item 10A, the Legislative and Regulations Committee report. Mr. Durking, will you provide this report? Yes, uh, good morning, uh, Madam President and board members. Uh, what we've done is we have two attachments that were included as part of the board packet. We have our committee meeting report of both uh, October 2nd, 2020, and the committee meeting report of January 14th, 2021. Uh, are there any questions regarding these reports? If there are no questions, we do have two attachments were, that were also included with the uh, board packet. The first is the 2021-22 uh, BVNPT calendar. And this was referred to in some of our uh, underlying documents as the legislative task calendar. Um, so given that, I would defer to uh, our executive officer, Ms. Yamaguchi, to fill us in on those points. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the calendar that has uh, been attached to you, we have also actually noticed in the agenda for the very end of the, the time. This um, this is the calendar that was approved by the board earlier this year, um, but we've made a few additions um, predominantly to, to reflect the, the legislators ca legislature's calendar um, as well as a few other dates. Um, we anticipate trying to update this as regularly as possible, you know, how things change quickly, but um, Anything that would require the board to change its meeting dates, um, and by that I refer to, of course, the regular meetings, and we would still have the the flexibility to um, for the president to call for a special meeting. Um, but we would make certain that um, any big changes would be um, brought back before the board. But we also want to make certain that the board members have this calendar um, for their own reference. Um, we'll be putting it on our web page as well. Mr. Chair. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, the second item, as we all know, is the uh, preparation for our sunset hearing. 
Uh, this was also contained in the EO's report, but if there's any other questions, I would once again defer to uh, Ms. Yamaguchi. Thank you again, Mr. Chair. And actually, if, um, if I could actually, the tenor of the discussion we had in the committee was actually focused more on the, um, as well on, on the subsequent legislation that we would see um, renewing our sunset. So if the, any of the board members had any specific questions about that, I'd be really happy to answer them. Thanks, Mr. Chair, back to oh, you. Our next uh, item would be the rulemaking calendar for 2021 and uh, update on rulemaking packages. I, I believe you um, uh, addressed this briefly. If there's any questions, I would once again defer to our EO. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, move, we're moving right along. This is, of course, a, a very long and detail-oriented process, um, but things are things are moving according to the calendar we had approved at the um, special meeting in January. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yes, that was approved. So if there's no other questions, uh, our strategic plan, and once again, uh, Ms. Yamaguchi. Wonderful. Um, to, em to embroider a bit on um, what we had talked about just prior, um, again, every committee, we're hoping to spend a, a good amount of time at the next meeting or meetings even to really really analyze, really dig deep into the goals and the timelines. And, and uh, it's um, it's fair to say that each of those committees is going to have a pretty lively few years ahead of them with the strategic plan goals. But again, I'd be delighted to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Ms. Yamaguchi. If there's nothing further from board members, um, that would conclude the Ledge Reg report. So, uh, Dr. Mountain. Thank you, Mr. Durking. Um, any public comment? There are no hands raised at this time out in the public. Thank you, moderator. Uh, then we will go ahead and move on to item 11A, Enforcement Division Report. Ms. Wood, would you please provide this report? Ms. Wood? Dr. Mountain, can you give us one moment, please? Sure. Madam Chair, um, may I suggest? Sorry about, sorry about that, guys. Uh, there we go. Technological difficulties. So this is Antoinette Wood. Um, so right now, um, as you remember, during the special board meeting, we were approved to set the petitioner hearings to the 
DAG for transmittal to the Office of Administrative Hearings. Um, we have transmitted all of those petitioner hearings and a few more. We received four more petitioner hearing requests. So we have transmitted 60. We are waiting for one of the new petitioner requests to give us a little more information. We will get that transmitted um, appropriately and quickly. Um, we are currently working to hire an SSM-1 for our um, enforcement division. Um, we have been closing cases and lowering case aging. Are there any questions on the enforcement division statistics report? Ms. Norton, you have a question? Uh, yes, I was just wondering, I believe it's on here, but under the license arrest conviction received, I mm -hmm. thought I saw in December of 2019 that there was 209. Was that an error? Or was there really 209 people arrested in December of 2019? There was really 200 convictions received. Well this is infinite. There was really 209 people arrested. So um, December, so unfortunately, a lot of our um, licensees are arrested for drug and alcohol issues. And December is a time during the holidays when a lot of DUIs seem to spike. Yeah. Oh, I was really hoping that was an error. Um, no, unfortunately. And then can, you tell me, can you tell me what's included in total intake statistic? Um, so intake is everything that is coming in into the board, whether that be a complaint, uh, a criminal case, that's all, that's everything. Okay, so it's all lumped into one? Yes, so just to kind of show what's what's coming in. So when we divide it up, you have a, 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 an overall picture. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is there any public comment? I do not see any at this time. Thank you so much, moderator. Then I believe that we are ready to move on to item 11A, the Enforcement Committee report. Mr. Maxey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, um, so on January 19th, the committee met and we discussed, um, first we did a round table of enforcement managers and, and talked about the statistics review. Um, and then we went into cost recovery discussion um, as well as the disciplinary guidelines and um, also petitioner hearings. Um, I just want to put on record that Ms. Wood and her team are doing a fantastic job. Um, and uh, that's it from the report from our committee. Thank you so much. Uh, board members, are there any questions? Uh, Ms. Norton, you have your hand raised. Is that from before? Uh, Ms. Turner, you have your hand raised. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to comment that I'm glad that the um, Enforcement Committee is taking a look at how we can recover costs um, involved in disciplinary actions. I know it's difficult, maybe difficult for the licensee, but with our budget uh, concerns and the money we spend towards enforcement, um, it's, it's important that we try our best to recover um, fund money when we can. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Turner. Uh, Ms. Carpenter, a comment? It's a question, and I'm not really certain that this is the proper format for it, but all of the cases that were referred to the Attorney General's office, I understand that we, the board, will have an opportunity to um, assess these decisions. And I'm wondering what format this will take and when. That's a good question, um, Ms. Yamaguchi um, or Mr. Swinson. Thank you. Um, thank you for the question, Ms. Carpenter, and, and thank you, Mr. Maxey. Um, I have uh, our, our chief, Antoinette Wood, with me, and um, she'd really, really, really enjoy answering that question. I would. Thank you, Elaine. 
So um, what will happen is it'll be just like any other hearing that goes through BBMPT. So they will be, they'll go to the Office of Administrative Hearing. We've already transmitted everything over to the DAG. What will happen is then they will negotiate a date in order to have the hearing held. Um, so it could be very soon or depending on some people, they may have scheduling issues and may push it a little farther out. Um, that'll be on a licensee by licensee basis. Um, and then as you would normally get the decisions, they'll go to you for vote and then you'll have the opportunity to review and vote. And we can also hold a closed session on anything that needs to be held on. Thank you, Ms. Wood. Are there any public comments? Oh, I have lots of questions too in our chat box. Ms. Turner, did you want to say something else? I still see hands raised. And Ms. Norton, I see your hand is raised as well. This is the yeah. I do not see any hands raised out in the public. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Norton, uh, did yes. you want to say something? Yes, I had a question. Um, about how do we, and, and I don't know if this is the appropriate places to raise it either, but I did have a question with um, how do we stay current now that we've referred all of our cases? Um, what was the discussion related about how we stay current with our cases and we don't go back into having another um, backlog of the cases? Was there any discussion related to that or where would we be having that discussion? Ms. Norton, thanks. That's a great question. And I believe the intent was that the enforcement committee would first be talking about um, our path forward and, and possibly changing the way we do certain tasks. Um, Ms. Wood? Yes. Hi, this is Antoinette. So we had discussed um, a couple of options and opportunities, perhaps um, having uh, a north and south look, um, doing different things with that. Um, sending specific cases that are easy, such as ones that where they haven't passed the NCLEX and it's been two years, we could send those directly to OAH to just be handled. Um, items where there's been no substantial change since they gave up their um, license during the course of probation, they were granted probation once, made the decision to give it up, and now have decided to come back because they've either... Um, handled whatever issues they were having, such as their addiction or, or anything else. So those ones, we had talked about maybe sending those directly to OAH and then having the board really review the ones that, that have a little more substance and meat that really need that, that review. And, and this is Elaine again. I believe the intent was for the Enforcement Committee to map out um, the process going forward and, and to bring a motion to the board. Mr. Chair? Yes. Was there any discussion about altering the those that come before us just to have a modification of their probation about moving those through a different forum? Not, not that I remember that being the conversation, but I, I think that we did discuss, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Wood, that um, we would try to increase um, the amount that we would be utilizing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Wood? Yes, um, we could definitely um, put that kind of in the category of sending the um, early terminations for probation or the modifications for probation to the administrative, uh, the Office of Administrative Hearings, and then having it come back for the board to vote on to kind of keep things moving. I will say our ETPs and MOPs are of my highest concern as far as um, an unknown workload. We currently have approximately 33 people, I believe, at last check that are eligible for an ETP. Um, you know, folks would like to get off probation sooner, especially if they've been compliant, so they can either move on to bridge programs, um, start looking at promotional opportunities because um, they can't supervise others. So that's definitely um, a workload that we anticipate will continue to come in that the board could choose to, or the committee could choose to move elsewhere. Yes, I would, I would agree. It seems like we would want to move those along that have, you know, that have been working and need a modification. Um, and then 
I don't know, I, I'll just say it here. I'm, I'm much more comfortable with having cases referred in that aspect than having case, you know, I'm slightly uncomfortable to have people that need to be reinstated, have the reinstatements being sent to the AGs and not being able to interact with the reinstatements. Um, so I would like to look at, an, at, at ways that we can streamline and shorten cases so that we can have more of the reinstatement cases actually come before the board. Um, maybe we can take a look at what are, you know, there's different, there will be different buckets, or there have been different buckets. I've been on this board a long time, and people tend to fall in these, in these buckets, and not that I'm saying that each case is not individual, um, but I, I think there's a lot that we can do to ensure that we don't get into a situation that we have now found ourselves in, understanding, of course, that it was uh, made worse by COVID, but even pre-COVID, we were already suffering from backlog. Thank you, Ms. Norton. You raised some excellent points, and and I'm sure that we'll we'll enjoy discussing this and 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 bringing this back to the board for um, some planning for the future, Mr. Chair. Nothing more from us, uh, unless my colleague, um, Ms. Rubicava, has something to say, or Chad. I have nothing to add, but thank you so much. Thank you. All right, then we'll move on. Is there any public comment? Madam Chair, Ms. Rooks has her hand up. Um, I'm not sure if oh, I don't see a question for enforcement. Yes, I do have a question and please forgive me if this is not the proper form for this question, but since we're looking at and talking about cost effectiveness as it relates to our budgeting, I have a question under staffing and I was wondering, and, and I do appreciate uh, the work that um, people are doing uh, related to contact tracing. I think it's very important um, and um, appreciative, but I was wondering why we went with um, an entire, uh, a, retired annuitant um, as opposed to um, offering an out of class? And um, did we think about what it costs to have an, a retired annuitant um, versus uh, offering out of class for, I think, AGPA or SSA? Am I looking at that correctly? What classification is the retired annuitant is my question. So what is there? The, hi, this is Antoinette. So the retired yeah, annuitants hi. that we have right now are working at the um, OT and SSA level. So okay. we really wouldn't have anyone to work out of class at those levels. Um, unfortunately, in our, well, fortunately and unfortunately in our office, we only have SSAs and above in um, enforcement. Okay. So we wouldn't have really okay. had the opportunity for out of class. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, moderator, were there any public comments? I'm sorry. There are not. Thank you so much. Um, then we will move on to item 12, the board calendar. Ms. Yamaguchi, will you please provide this information? Thank you again, Madam Chair. Um, again, the, the calendar that, that's before you is um, substantially the same as, as last time. And we had talked a bit about this under the Legend Regs Committee report. Um, but we do want to make certain that the, this calendar is is useful and, and and carries as much detail and information as the board members want. So actually, if you wouldn't mind, if there are any things um, internally, externally that the board members would find helpful, um, I, I you know your your suggestions are always welcome. And as I said, we hope to just have this updated on an as needed basis. Um, we would certainly, if it's um, not timely to enclose in a board packet, we would probably just email it out to, to the board members under separate cover just to make certain that it is current. But but again, our, our, our hope is to have this regularly updated on our webpage. Um, but I'd be delighted to have any comments or questions or suggestions, Madam Chair. I see no 
hands raised. Are, are there public comments? There are no hands raised in the public. Thank you so much. Since it's not quite 11 o'clock, we will take a 15 minute break and come back. Uh, Elaine, do you think they'll be in our meeting at 11 or should we come back at five after 11? Uh, five after would probably be a really safe move. Okay. So then let's go ahead and take a 20 minute break and we can reconvene at 1105. the executive officer. Uh, Ms. Holmes is not on yet, but Ms. Marashidi is. Oh, okay. Then we will start with uh, Ms. Marashidi um, from Arts Our Update from the Business Consumer Services and Housing Agency. So thank you so much. Good morning, board president and board members. I'm Leila Marashidi, deputy secretary of Business and Consumer Relations at the Business Consumer Services and Housing Agency, also known as BCSH. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to provide an update to your board today. BCSH oversees 11 departments, including the Department of Consumer Affairs, which is the largest department within our agency with over 3,600 employees. The other departments in our agency include the Department, the department of Alcoholic Beverage Control, Department of Financial Protection and Innovation, the Department of Housing and Community Development, the Department of Real Estate, among others. Our role at agency is to provide strategic guidance and support to the departments we oversee. Our agency goals include supporting the governor's COVID-19 response, protecting California consumers, addressing homelessness and expanding affordable housing, building partnerships and promoting diversity, equity and inclusion. I want to thank the board and board staff for the great work that you are all doing. It goes without saying that the past 12 months have been incredibly challenging. It's been a difficult year. However, it's been a difficult year navigated by incredibly resilient people. The COVID-19 pandemic required all of us to rethink how we work and how we protect the communities we serve. Of course, the licensees you regulate, vocational nurses and psychiatric technicians, have played a very important role in this pandemic as well. California's COVID-19 numbers continue to show signs of improvement. The number of cases continue to increase, but at a much slower rate. And as of this morning, about 6.7 million vaccines have been administered. While this is promising, we are not out of the woods yet. And please continue to keep yourselves, your families, colleagues, and friends safe. I also wanted to share that one of my priorities in working with DCA is board appointments, and I would like to provide a brief overview. Currently, BVMPT has two public member vacancies, which are both governor's appointments. Uh, we share the goal of, filling, of a fully seated, diverse, and effective board. Filling current and upcoming vacancies is always a priority. That being said, if any board members know of any great candidates, um, or if any members of the public watching today, um, are interested in getting involved, please find the link titled Board Member Resources on DCA's homepage to apply for an appointment. Thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today. That concludes my presentation and I will hand it back to the board president. Thank you so much. Are there any questions from the board? I see no hands raised. Are there any public questions or comments? I see no hands raised in the public. Thank you so much, moderator. Thank you for your presentation. Appreciate it. And it looks like um, our update from the Department of Consumer Affairs, Ms. Carrie Holmes, that you are on. Thank you, and thank you so much for your patience. Good morning, board president and board members. I'm Carrie Holmes, Deputy Director of Board and Bureau Relations at the Department of Consumer Affairs. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to provide a department update to the board. I would like to congratulate Board President Mountain and Vice President Deerking on your reelection. Thank you for your willingness to serve. DCA is pleased to announce that on January 12th, 
Governor Newsom appointed Monica Vargas of Sacramento to the role of Deputy Director of Communications at DCA. Monica has been an information officer in the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services since 2015. She was also an information officer at DCA from 2013 to 2015 and has served in multiple roles at OES. Ms. Vargas rejoined DCA last month and she's hit the ground running. On February 2nd, Governor Newsom appointed Sarah Murillo as Deputy Director of Administrative Services at DCA. Ms. Murillo has gained a wide range of experience in her nearly 20 years of service to Californians in various state departments, including California Complete Count Census 2020. Ms. Morello comes to DCA with a skill set that makes her well suited to support all the entities within our department. Her appointment fills the final vacancy in DCA's executive office. For board members, 2021 is a mandatory sexual harassment prevention training year. This means all employees and board members are required to complete the training this year. I'd also like to remind you that your Form 700 filings are due by April 1st. You as board members are designated appointees and required to complete a Form 700, even if you have no reportable interests. If you have any questions about how to file, you may speak to DCA's Conflict of Interest Filing Officer, Jill Johnson, in the Office of Human Resources. I'm pleased to let you know that Board and Bureau Relations, in partnership with Solid Training, has developed a brand new board member orientation training to be held on WebEx March 11th. We are very excited about the new and improved training, which has been updated based on board member feedback and requests. As a reminder, newly appointed and reappointed board members are required to take BMOT once a year. Oh, sorry, within a year of appointment, not once a year. To register for BMOT and for more details, please visit the DCA Board Member Resource Center. Finally, I'd like to let you know about two exciting new initiatives launched by DCA Director Kirk Meyer for 2021 to enhance DCA's services to all boards and bureaus. The first is an executive officer cabinet. This group of board and bureau executives will maintain regular communication, provide feedback and information to DCA, and assist with special projects that will impact all boards and bureaus. The second is the Enlightened Licensing Project. This work group is being formed to utilize licensing subject matter experts within the entire Department of Consumer Affairs. This group will help individual boards and bureaus streamline and make their licensing processes more effective and efficient by utilizing best practices, information technology, and cost-saving measures. These two new initiatives are just kicking off and will keep you updated on their work and impacts. As always, Board and Bureau Relations is here to help. If there is anything we can do to assist, please reach out. That concludes my presentation and I'll hand it back over to Board President Mountain. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Are there any questions from the board? I see no hands raised. Are there any public comments or questions? I see no hands raised out in the public. Thank you so much, moderator. And thank you for your presentation. Uh, that brings us to a public comment on items not on the agenda. Uh, moderator, are there any hands raised? I do not see any. I was giving them a few minutes to see if they wanted to raise their hand. I see Thank none. You. Thank you so much. Uh, item 14, are there suggestions for future agenda items? Board members, please raise your hands if you have any suggestions for future agenda items. Ms. Norton? I have brought this up before, so I'll just raise it again. And, and I don't know where it fits, but it does seem now that we have become much more efficient in our board business on our Friday board day. Um, so I'm just looking at ways we can um, perhaps when we do get back to the business of doing reinstatement hearings, um, that we would look towards whether we would need, whether we could 
be better served with a day and a half of reinstatement hearing than a half a day of board business um, now that our committees are up and running and seem to be running much more efficiently. So I, I've raised that before and um, I'll just, I'm just raising it again. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Norton. Any other suggestions? Uh, are there any public comments? I see no hands raised out in the public. Oh, Ms. Carpenter, do you have a suggestion? Do you have something you'd like to say? I see your hand raised. Yes, I was a little late raising it. I apologize. Um, I would like an update um, on the progress that the Attorney General's office is making on, on the items that have been referred there. And you'd like to see that on the at the next board uh, board meeting? Yes. Yes, I assume it's something that the committee will provide to us, but I just wanted to make certain um, that this specifically is brought to our attention. Thank, Thank you. you. That's, that's a good suggestion. Thank you. All right. Any other uh, suggestions for future agenda items? All right. We will uh, move to the closed session. This is the moderator. At this time, I'm going to stop the recording and um, escort the public out and I will lock the meeting. So give me five minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody out in the public for joining us today.